What's going on everyone? Welcome to Let's Talk Finances. My name is Trey and on this video we're going to be going over the most asked question amongst Vanguard or even index fund investors and that is, is Vanguard's total stock market ETF, VTI, better than Vanguard's S&P 500 ETF, VOO. If you're one of those individuals who've been sitting on the computer late at night or all throughout the day just trying to figure out, damn, which one should I invest in, VTI or VOO? Hey, I've been there, I know how it feels, and I've got you covered in this video. If you stay tuned until the end, I'm actually going to be giving you which one I would choose for my portfolio. That's what we're going to be going over today. Before we get into this video, guys, I would like to ask all of you for a very, very huge favor, and that is put a thumbs up down in the comments below for those service members who have lost their lives in Afghanistan recently. I'm sure most of you know, but some of you may not. I am currently an active duty Special Operations Forces member. I was recently in Afghanistan, and one of the individuals who was killed in Afghanistan was actually an individual that I knew who served with 9th Psychological Operations Battalion under 1st Special Forces Command. If you could, please just put a thumbs up in the comments below in support of those individuals who lost their lives and also in support of their families. I would greatly appreciate it, guys. I'm gonna be breaking it down very simply into four separate categories, and those are going to be composition, historical performance, fees, and my very, very favorite diversification. Let's go ahead and dive in. Number one, it's going to be composition. VOO, Vanguard's S&P 500 Exchange Traded Fund, was actually established in 2010. Now, it seeks to track the S&P 500 index and also comprises of 500 of the most successful and largest companies within the United States. All of those companies that you think of as being the giants in the US market, well, that's exactly what this particular exchange traded fund invests in. Just to name a few, we're talking Tesla, Apple, Microsoft, Walmart, the list goes on and on. So just say, 500 of the largest and most successful companies within the United States. Now, VTI, on the other hand, was actually established in 2001, so it was just a little bit older. It seeks to track the CRSP US Total Market Index, and it invests in over 3,500 companies. For those of you who are new to investing and you don't quite understand why there is even a debate if the S&P 500 invests in 500 companies, and VTI invests in over 3,500. We're gonna cover that as we continue to go in this video. To make it make sense to you right now, VOO invests in 500 of the largest companies, to whereas VTI also invests in those same 500 companies that VOO does, but it also includes those mid, small, and micro cap companies. So in actuality, VOO invests in 100% large cap companies, to whereas VTI invests in 80% large cap companies, 10% mid cap companies, 6% small cap companies, and about 4% of those micro cap companies. So think of it this way, VOO makes up about 80% of VTI because VTI is market cap weighted. And because of that, for every $1 that you invest in VTI, 80% of that is gonna go to the S&P 500. The other 20% are going to be split up between mid, small, and micro cap companies. It wouldn't be a compositional breakdown if I didn't add the top 10 holdings for both of these funds. And it's actually simple. If we look at the example here, they're actually virtually the same. So if we're talking in terms of, hey, I wanna invest in more companies or better companies, in this event, the top 10 holdings make up virtually the same exact companies, all right? I need you guys' help on this, okay? Because I got into a discussion with my young 17-year-old son and the topic came up. Who is the greatest player ever in the NBA? The GOAT. And for me, it's a no-brainer. Michael Jordan is the greatest player of all times. However, my son says that LeBron is the greatest of all time. For those of you who are watching this, 
In the comments below, please put who the greatest player of all times is in your opinion. Moving on to category number two, and that's going to be the historical performances of both of these exchange traded funds. As you can see here, both of these funds are actually very, very popular funds. As a matter of fact, they're two of the most popular exchange traded funds ever. But one thing to remember here is that small and mid caps have outperformed large caps historically because they are riskier. The riskier you tilt your investments into, generally the higher your returns will be. And the less riskier, the lower your returns are going to be. Because of this, we generally expect VTI to outperform VOO. Historically speaking, that is very accurate. Although the returns for both of these funds are not that far apart. So I'm not, I'm not saying that VTI just blows VOO out of the water. Not saying that at all, but if we're just comparing and doing an accurate comparison here, VTI has and does slightly outperform VOO. And the reason for that is simple, okay? Again, VOO invests in 500 of the largest companies in the United States. But because VTI includes those mid, small, and micro cap companies, it's going to tend to bring in a little bit more returns because it makes it riskier. And what helps you determine this is actually something called the size risk factor premium. VTI is a lot more popular than VOO. This doesn't mean that I'm leaning one way or the other, but if you just look at the historical performance, VTI has a net asset of over $1 trillion, to whereas VOO trails it because it comes in at just over $500 billion in assets. So that is a direct correlation of individuals putting more money into VTI as opposed to VOO. Now, does that specifically make it better than the other? I personally do not believe so, all right? You could say that Ford may outsell Chevrolet. I don't know that to be the truth. I'm using it as an example, but it may, out, it may outsell it. Does it make it better? Not necessarily. It just means that it fits the mode for a lot more individuals. That is the exact situation here with VTI. VTI has over a trillion dollars in assets. I know a lot of you really want the one, five, and 10 year breakdowns for both of these funds. So I'm actually going to include that in the descriptions below so that you can go look at that and spend as much time as you would like to go over the specifics. Let's go into the third category to help you decide which one of these funds are better. That's going to be fees. There are some things that you should be looking into when trying to decide which index funds or exchange traded funds that you should be looking into. And fees definitely plays one of the largest roles in making that determination. It can be the deciding factor between a really great fund or not so great fund because those fees will break you off. And in this event, the good news for both of these funds is that the expense ratio is the exact same. And that is 0.03%. All right. So being that this is relatively short, let's go ahead and move in to the fourth category for this video, and that is diversification. Listen, this portion is gonna make up the largest section of this video, and that is simply because in order to have a very good solid portfolio that brings in solid returns for the long term, well, the only way to do that is to diversify your portfolio. I know you've heard me say this over and over and over again in other videos, but I really wanna hammer that home because some of you still may not be getting it, all right? Diversification is key in building a strong investment portfolio. And when we talk about diversification, these two particular funds always come into the topic. It always finds itself into the center of debate. Before Tesla hit the S&P 500, it was considered a small cap and then somewhere along the line, a mid cap company. At that particular time, VTI was already invested in Tesla because it was a small to a mid cap company. As you can look at the chart here, once Tesla took off in early 2020, because it was already a part of VTI, those who were already invested in it reaped 
those benefits. However, to the contrary, VOO did not include Tesla because it had not yet joined the S&P 500. So those people lost out on those gains. I, for one, wouldn't want to miss out on that growth. And the way you don't miss out on it is by investing in a fund that is fully diversified. Now, the more companies that you can be invested into, the better your returns will be in the long term. In the very beginning, I actually chose VOO. But what I soon came to realize was that I wasn't as diversified as I wanted to be because I was missing out on those small, mid, or even micro cap companies. So I actually switched from VOO to VTI. Now, again, the returns are pretty much about the same, all right? VTI may perform slightly better than VOO. But for me and my personal investment style, I felt better knowing that I was fully diversified and invested in every sized company that I possibly could invest in. And since then, I haven't looked back, all right? I went from VOO to VTI and then eventually switched over to VTSAX. So again, I know if you still are asking that question, hey Trey, just tell me which one to choose. I would say choose VTI. And this isn't me talking shit about VOO, but VTI, in my humble opinion and in my experience, is just a bit better simply because of its diversification. There you have it, guys. Hopefully this video has helped solve or help answer that age-old question for you of which one is better, VTI or VOO. If you've enjoyed this video, please do not forget to gently tap the like button, hit the notification bell so that you don't miss any other videos just like this one. Most importantly, please go ahead and subscribe to this channel, the best channel in helping you reach financial independence and also helping you become a millionaire in retirement through investing. Until the next video, guys, let's talk finances then. Thank you.